people that, that are just in ministry and you're in ministry too. That's just a ministry by itself. A marriage is a ministry by itself. And um, I'm just such an honor to be able to say that I know you and I love you. <laughs> so, so, and we just want to welcome you, Stephanie. <laughs> Come on. So, so, so. I'm loving these vines. <laughs> I feel like swinging off them. <laughs> and this, this just kills me over here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like running over right now and putting my head through. <laughs> really? Okay, okay. <laughs> So tonight I decided to wear some fur <laughs> in honor of the wild jungle women. <laughs> I'm burning up in it though a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love coming to this church because there's just so much joy and freedom. And it's so nice to come to a place where you could feel like you can receive and you can drink. <laughs> it's so, uh, it's such a blessing. And I feel so honored and privileged that you opened up your home and your house to me. I really do. I feel so, so blessed. And I just feel like this conference is going to change your life. That you're not going to leave the same. And I just want to set the tone for this conference starting tonight and I believe that the word over this conference is freedom. And when freedom comes, that's when renewed hope comes and renewed vision comes. And I feel like the Lord is going to set you free from insecurity or doubt or feeling restricted in, in progressing in your dreams or progressing in your goals. You're just going to have such a freedom to be yourself. And to pursue everything that God has for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I just feel like many of you are going to be free from the opinions of others. Yeah. Hey, that hits, that hit you! <laughs> Come on! Free from the opinions of others. Yeah, where you just take comfort in the fact that your father loves you for who you are, and it doesn't matter what anyone else says or what anyone else thinks. All that matters is what God thinks about you, and God is your father only has good thoughts towards you. Any negative thoughts that you hear in your head about yourself, any, anything that you hear that says you can't do this or you shouldn't do that, or you don't have the abilities or you're inadequate, those are not from God. You need to recognize that. The enemy does not want you to progress. He does not want you to be free. He does not want you to dream. So he's going to put these negative thought patterns in your mind. And that's where we battle the most is in our mind, right? Because what we think becomes what we believe and then becomes what we act out. So the enemy will target the mind, but we need to address the fact that those negative thoughts that you're feeling and you're thinking are not from God, because God's, God's thoughts towards you are always good, and they're always positive. When he looks at you, he doesn't look at you based on your past or even your past mistakes. He doesn't even look at you based on your present moment. He exists outside of the realm of time, and he sees you based on where you're going. He sees your future self, and that's, that's, that's why he calls you out. Thank you, Lord. Oh. And Tracy, you're awesome. <laughs> you're a fire starter. I feel like God is unlocking your voice. He is unlocking your voice. Come, stand up, stand up. He is unlocking your
your voice. <laughs> yes! He's unlocking your voice, and I feel like you have a reputation in the city, and people know you, but they're going to know you even more. Then you're just going to build this reputation that people are going to know you as the church lady from Glen Burnie. <laughs> Your, your reputation is going to spread, and it's not just going to be restricted to this area. It's going to spread to different states. It's going to spread to different nations. You're going to develop a reputation in Jesus' name, and you're a fire starter. You spread the fire of God wherever you go. But right now, I declare that your voice is unlocked, that fear will not have possession over you, that insecurity will not have possession over you, that your voice is unlocked. And you can have security in the Father's love for you to release everything that you are. Because it's going to change people's lives, and it does change people's lives. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and Kim, I feel like you have such a desire to be in the Father's will. Like, you just have this heart that says, God, I want to be in your will. And maybe part of you has felt like you haven't been in his will or you haven't fulfilled everything that God has called you to do. And there is more for your life, but I feel like God wants to give you a peace and an assurance that right now in this present moment, you are in the will of God for your life. And you can feel secure in that and you can feel at peace in that. And I just had a picture of all of these books and they were just these huge books filled with all of these things. And I'm like, God, God, what are you showing me? And he, it's almost like he brought me into the library of heaven. And there was a whole shelf that, that had your name on it. And all those books had your name on it. And inside of those book, books was all the, the, the deeds that you have done and all the people that you have changed in your life. It's, it's things that you don't even realize that you've done. That you, through, through your actions throughout your life and your, your desire to be in the will of God, you've changed so many lives. And I feel like there's a whole shelf in heaven's library with your name on it, with all of the people that you've changed and all the nations that you've shifted just by your obedience to God. So have peace that he's pleased with you, that he's proud of you, that you are in the will of God in this present moment, that of course there's more for you, but just to have a peace in your heart and a security that you are in the will of God in this very moment. I love you. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> what are you oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Wow. So yeah, freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. That is the word for this weekend, and I want you to take a hold of it and believe it. That in the things that you've been struggling with or feeling insecure with or even things that have been coming against you from the outside, you're going to be set free. You're going to be set free to be yourself, to pursue everything that God has for you, free to believe in who God has called you to be. Oh. <laughs> you guys are beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I just, I feel like God is going to unlock everyone's voice in here. That there is going to be unlocking of voices that I feel like the enemy targets women to try and bind them in insecurity and bind them in feelings of weakness and, and make them feel like their voices aren't adequate enough or they have nothing to say. But I believe that God is going to break that in your life and that your voice is going to be unlocked. So some of you know who I am and some of you don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm Stephanie, and I'm married to Matt Sorger. We've been married for a year and seven months now. We made it! No. <laughs> no, it's been amazing. Marriage is marriage is beautiful. I love it. I love it so much. And he's he's an incredibly supportive and loving husband that just wants to see me fly in my giftings and in my dreams. And 
that's the that's the best kind of man. So he's been in ministry for for 15 years, and what we do is we travel the world full time, ministering at different churches, ministering in different nations, and seeing people set free and delivered and transformed in the glory of God, and healed and just made new. So I believe that tonight we're gonna have some we're gonna have some ministry time after I I teach. And many of you are going to be set free and delivered and transformed. I, I really, really believe that many of you are not going to leave here the same. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to um, speak to you tonight just about how to be free in who you are and to identify roadblocks that might come against your calling or your destiny. Because when we address these roadblocks or we address these things, we're able to create strategy against it. So one thing, one thing I think that is a roadblock to our destinies or is a roadblock to what God wants to fulfill in our lives is a lack of identity. And sometimes we go through what I call like an identity crisis where we don't really know who we are. And I want to share my personal story of how God revealed my identity and how that made way for my destiny. And this all happened in Africa. This is where my, my husband and I met. We met on the mission field of Mozambique, Africa, with Heidi and Roland Baker. Some of you know Heidi and Roland Baker. And, um, and, and we met there. I was there for three months in December 2012. And before that, I was going through an identity crisis. I, was, I, I, w- I remember looking into the mirror and asking God, or asking myself, Stephanie, who are you? And I was, um, I was an athlete. I was a high achiever in school. I got many awards, and I was trying through my works and through my talents to create an identity for myself. But no matter how many awards I got or what I achieved in my life, I never that never could satisfy the question, Stephanie, who are you? I just felt unsatisfied. I didn't know who I was. And even, even some of the mistakes I made and some of the things that I was ashamed of, that didn't fulfill that question, Stephanie, who are you? So I went on this journey that eventually led me to Africa. And in Africa, God revealed that I had placed a lot of false labels on myself. And also other people had placed these labels on me and society even placed these labels on me. And they were things that I was identifying myself as and they were false. So in Africa, God started to strip these false labels off of me. And some of these labels, you know, had a label of shame on on me from, you know, mistakes that I had made, things that I was ashamed of. God stripped that from me. Maybe the label of being an excellent student, he stripped that from me. And some things are good. They're good things. Being a good student or being an achiever, I mean, those are good things. But to base your identity on it, you'll never truly be satisfied in that. So he started taking off all of these labels, and he brought me through this deep heart process. And it was, it was painful, but it was beautiful at the same time. And I got to a point where I felt like I had, I had nothing. Like I, I, I felt like two bare hands before God. And I was like, God, now I really don't know who I am. <laughs> but in that place, he called me his daughter. He said, now that I've removed all the things that you thought that you were, all the things that you, all the labels that you placed on yourself, all the labels that other people placed on you, I can now call you who you truly are. And that is daughter. And that changed my life. It changed everything. And from that place of being called daughter, he started, the Lord started to reveal the father's love to me and, and what God as a father who he was and how he wanted the best for my life and how I could trust him with my life, how I could surrender to him and know that as a loving father, he was going to give me good gifts and he was going to give me the best for my life. And I also came to a place where I wasn't trying to achieve love from him or approval from him through my works, where I could just rest in the fact that I was unconditionally loved by God because I was his child. And that freed me from so much, so much of a works mentality or overachieving mentality where I could just rest in the fact that he loved me for me 
whether I did anything or did nothing, whether I made a mistake or didn't make a mistake, his love was constant for me. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to turn to um, the scripture just to kind of back up what I'm saying. And if you guys want to turn to Matthew 3.17, I have my Bible on my phone. <laughs> Sorry. I'm 25. <laughs> This, um, in Matthew 3, it talks about when Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, and this was the mark of the beginning of his ministry. And in Matthew 3.17, it said, oh, let's read, let's read from 16, Matthew 3.16. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up at one side of the water, and behold, the heavens were opened. And he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, my beloved, in whom I delight. And some versions say, in whom I'm well pleased. And I love this scripture because God, as the Father of Jesus, affirmed his Son before he did anything. He called him his Son, in whom I'm well pleased. He even said, I'm pleased with you. Before he began his ministry, before he performed miracles, before he performed signs and wonders, he affirmed him as his son, and he affirmed his value and, and his love for him. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel like God's love and approval for us isn't based on what we do or don't do or what mistakes we make. His love and approval is given to us simply because we're his kids. And I really want that to sink into us tonight. That he loves you because you're you, because he created you. Now just to kind of go into the power of labels, I want to um, turn to John 8, 11. No, John 8, 1 to 11. And I, um, this is the story of Mary Magdalene, and I find this to be such a powerful story about redemption and grace and how God has mercy on us and how God can give us a fresh start and how he can remove the labels off of our life and call us by a new name, even if we've lived a life as a harlot. <laughs> so in, in John 8, 11, 1 to 11, let me see if I'm going to read all of it. I'll read all of it. <laughs> but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came back into the temple, and the people came to him in crowds. He sat down and was teaching them. When the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, they made her stand in the middle of the court and put the case before him. Teacher, they said, this woman has been caught in the very act of adultery. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such woman offenders shall be stoned to death. But what do you say? This they said to try to test him, hoping they might find a charge on which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. However, when they persisted with their question, he raised himself up and said, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and, write, and went on writing on the ground with his finger. They listened to him, and then they began going out conscience-stricken one by one from the oldest down to the last one of them till Jesus was left alone with a woman standing there before him in the center of the court. When Jesus raised, his, raised himself up, he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She answered, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go on your way, and from now on, sin no more. And this is such a powerful story because I 
feel like we can all draw truths from Mary Magdalene's life and her journey that I kind of ponder and wonder, how did Mary get to this point in her life where she was considered a harlot? Did she, was she not loved by her parents? Did she, you know, was she succumbed to thinking that she, she wasn't beautiful or she wasn't valued and worthy, which caused her to go in this path? But what I believe is that she believed lies about herself. And she took on labels that eventually led to to her actions. And I believe we've all had this moment where we've believed a lie about ourselves and we've taken on that label as a present identity. And we see and we act according to that label. Maybe you've believed that you're ugly or you're unintelligent or you're impure or you're worthless or that you can't do something, but those are all lives. Like I said before, those negative thought patterns that come into your head are not from God. They're from the enemy, and we need to understand that and address that so that when those thoughts come into your head, you can hold them captive and you can you could cast them away and you can fill yourself with the truth of how God sees you. And I believe that sin has no authority over you, that it has no right to label you, that Jesus, through his blood and through through his sacrifice, has extended grace and mercy to you that completely washes away all of those things, that completely washes away sin, completely washes away any mistake that you've made, and he renames you. He renames you as his child. He he renames you as his righteous one, as a co-heir and a co-laborer with Christ, that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, that everything that he has is ours, that all of God rests inside of you and everything that he owns is, is ours. And it's amazing that in this moment when Mary was forgiven and, and, and she was cleansed and washed clean and given, given another chance and was extended the grace and mercy of God, she, she went on to travel with Jesus as one of his followers. She was the, you know, the first one to to see his uh, resurrection. because has, She has an amazing story that has been inspiring millions of people way past um, her life. And Jesus gave her a new name. He didn't judge her based on what she had done or her mistakes. He gave her a new name. He stripped the old labels, and he called her for who, who she truly was. And that was sanctified and pure and worthy and valuable. And because she felt such a love from Jesus and such a grace, she was able to turn away from her sin and to pursue a path of righteousness. Amen. (laughs) Who's hearing me tonight? You're not defined by past labels. You're not defined by your mistakes. You're defined by how how God sees you. And I just want to just say some declarations over you, and I'm just going to read them. That, and, and take these for yourself. I am free forever from condemnation. I am assured that all things work together for good. I cannot be separated from the love of God. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. I am confident that the good work God has begun in me will be perfected. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I am born of God, and the evil one cannot touch me. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I am God's child. I am God's beloved. I am God's daughter. Just receive those things for yourself. So I feel like identity, identity is the fir- is, is a roadblock that can come in the way of your destiny. But once you cast aside those false labels and receive the fact that you are a daughter, that you are prized by God, that you are seen as valuable and pure and worthy, that you're seen as royalty, then your destiny is opened up for you. You're not going to be bound. You're going to be set free. And I feel like another thing that that is a roadblock to our destiny is is fear. Come on, say your... (laughs) Hey! (laughs) Fear is real. It is. And even me standing up here today is, is me breaking through fear. Standing up here and sharing with you is, is me saying no to fear and saying yes to being confident in who God has created me to be and what God has destined for me to share. 
So how many of you know the story of Gideon in Judges 6? <laughs> oh, you know, joy is a good remedy for everything. I feel like when we experience the joy of the Lord, all fear dissipates, all fear goes away. And we just become confident and secure and free in who we are. Joy is good. You know, in, in Africa, I had an experience where I laughed for an entire day. Literally an entire day. We had a morning meeting, and it was with Roland Baker. I don't know. He's, he just stands there, and everyone just breaks out in holy laughter. So that's what happened to me. He just stood there, and I just couldn't take it. So I was just rolling on the floor. I was laughing. I literally rolled myself back to my, to my little cabin that I was staying in. My friends had to help me. I kept falling around and rolling in the dirt. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And all my whole house, we all were just overcome with holy laughter. And we were all trying to eat lunch. And we, there, we were in a communal kitchen. So we had this big table that we were all sitting around. Oh, you should have heard us. We were trying to eat. And we were all just, there was just such a bellowing and uproar of laughter. And we couldn't eat. And the whole day I was laughing until the, until the evening. And. In the middle of the day, we, we went out to pray for the sick. So we went out, we would go on hospital outreach. And I was just laughing and laughing as we were, as we were going to the hospital. And, and I, there was like gold dust all over me too. So that made me laugh even more. And I'm just sitting like praying for people. Not even praying, I'm just laughing over them. And this, this one girl had malaria and she was um she was burning up she was a young girl she had malaria she was really burning up she had a really high fever which as you know can be dangerous for a child and I was just laughing over her and and as I was laughing over her her temperature started to drop and the nurses I, I went and I was like check her temperature check her temperature and it was starting to go down and the nurses were like whatever you're doing just keep doing it <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, but at the end of the day, after I finally stopped laughing and I ended up losing my voice, <laughs> God had healed me of so much. He had done such a deep work in me. And hey, if he can do it through, through laughing or crying, I mean, <laughs> I'd rather take the laughing, but <laughs> crying is good too. <laughs> but there's just power and joy, power to heal you. And he just healed me of such deep things, and I just felt so free after that experience. So, anyways, that's that. <laughs> so, yeah, the story of Gideon. Um, in this story, the, the Israelites were under the oppressive rulership of the Midianites. And, um, and Gideon, in Judges 6, it states that he was in a wine press threshing wheat, when an angel of the Lord appeared before him and said, Mighty man of valor, you will deliver this nation as one man. And initially, he was like, who, you're talking to me? He didn't believe it. He didn't believe that God would call him mighty man of valor because he believed that he was the weakest in his family. And he started repeating back to the angel saying, but don't you know who I am? I'm the weakest in my family. I'm basically the weakest in this nation. How am I supposed to deliver, deliver Israel as one man? But again, the angel of the Lord said, mighty man of valor, you would deliver this nation as one man. And I love this because even despite Gideon's insecurity and his fear, God still called him who he saw Gideon to be. And it became a reality. As Gideon stepped out, in, even in his fear, God clothed him with his presence, and he did become that mighty man of valor that God prophesied and declared over him. So even if you're afraid, even if you feel like God has called you to do something, I say step out even if you're afraid. God will never call you when the circumstances are perfect in your life. He won't. 
He'll call you sometimes in the most inopportune times. He'll call you out to do something when you feel the weakest or you feel like you're the one struggling with things and you're like, God, you want me to pray for that person? I need breakthrough in that. Why are you, ta- why are you telling me to step out and do that? But, but sometimes when we step out to help someone else, God steps in to help us. And when we help someone in, in experiencing a breakthrough, God in turn breaks us through in an area that we're struggling with. So there's power in helping each other. When we help each other, God will always step in to help you. So if you feel like God has given you a prophetic word about something that you've gotten like five times, the same word, and it's just, it's been years, (laughs) years of the same word, even if you're afraid, even if you feel inadequate, even if you feel like you don't have the capabilities, just step out even in fear, because I promise you, like, like God clothed Gideon, God's going to clothe you with his presence, because God always calls you based on your future, not based on how you feel in the present moment. God sees you as, <laughs> God sees you as fully capable and secure and confident, and as you step out and take baby steps, even in fear, God will clothe you, he will mantle you, and you will become that woman that you, that you desire to be. And there's a beauty in the process. You know, just sharing personally, I have, you know, a vision of who I want to be in life. And there, I mean, I, 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 I'm walking towards that and I'm believing God for that, but I also, you also need to, be somewhat satisfied with where you are right now. Like, you can't always be too hard on yourself, where you're like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not there yet, I, so I'm not going to fully love myself, or I'm not fully going to enjoy myself now. But you need to, there's a beauty in the process, and God understands the process, and even if, you, if you're not there yet, it's okay. You'll get there. And you can love yourself in the moment and where you are right now. So I believe that fear is, is definitely a roadblock to our destinies. And I believe that the enemy uses fear to rule God's people and keep them from coming under the leadership of Jesus. Fear is not from God. So as you step out, and even if you're afraid, God will remove that from you. He will remove that fear. And I feel like people never fulfill the call of God on their lives because every time they try to go forward, the enemy uses fear to stop us. So there's, like, like I said before, there's a very real enemy that is trying to stop you from progressing, that is trying to stop you from fulfilling your destiny, and he uses fear as a means to block you from stepping forward, from stepping out when you feel fear, because sometimes we'll feel fear, you have a choice to either push through or to run away, right? You could run away or you could just say, no, I'm going to stand and I'm going to push through and I'm going to step out believing that God will anoint me, believing that God has called me a mighty woman of valor. deliver the nation (laughs) as one people. Hey, yeah! (laughs) Receive it! (laughs) Amen. (laughs) And just some scriptures on fear, you know, 2 Timothy, or overcoming fear, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Or, that's a different version, yeah. (laughs) And then Romans 8.15, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So when we come into the knowledge of God's unconditional love for us and we come into the knowledge that he's a loving father, there's no fear in that. Sometimes we have fear because we we fear failure. We fear making a mistake. Because when you step out, you're you're taking risks. And when you step out, there's always a risk of failing. But in the Father's love, there's no such thing as failure. 
God loves you no matter what, whether you succeed, whether you make a mistake. His love is constant for you because his love for you is not based on what you do. It's not based on works. It's based on simply who you are. And I keep saying that, but I want you guys to grasp it. <laughs> so identity can be a roadblock. Fear can be a roadblock. And I feel like also insecurity and comparison. And I struggle in this. <laughs> I'll be real. It's so easy to, to compare yourself. It just, it's, especially when you see someone else succeed and maybe you're struggling in something. It's so easy to be like, oh God, I want to be like that or I want to be at that place. But that's, I feel like that's an orphan mentality. That's believing that God doesn't have enough for that person and for you. Right? That's an orphan mentality. Orphans are out for themselves. Orphans are not about community. They just want to make sure that they're, they can sustain themselves and that they can, they can survive, that they can get enough food for the day, that they can find shelter for the night. But it's just mostly about self-preservation. But the identity of a daughter is, is about community. It's about empowering each other. And when we see someone succeed, we should celebrate in their success. That's a true mark of leadership where we're able to look at our sister and say, I'm going to help you to pursue your dreams. And I, I rejoice in what you've succeeded. And I rejoice in your accomplishments. And all the while believing that God has enough for your sister and for you and for everyone else. There's enough to go around and, and then some. <laughs> I feel like God wants to raise up a company of women that are so secure in who God has created them to be that they will help one another achieve their dreams and success. I feel like we're all on the same team and we have to start seeing that they're all part of the same body. And that we have to start looking at each other like sisters and not like strangers. How would you treat your sister? In a healthy sister relationship, there's, there's a friendship, there's respect, there's, you know, you're, you're cheering each other on. And I believe that that's, what, that's the kind of culture that God wants to cultivate within the women in the body of Christ. And I, I saw this quote that was really interesting. It says, blowing, this is about, like, comparison and, and jealousy. <laughs> blowing out another person's candle will not make yours shine brighter. <laughs> blowing out another person's candle will not make yours shine brighter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I feel convicted. <laughs> Struggle. It's true. Actually, encouraging each other and uplifting each other and celebrating in each other's successes will make your light shine even brighter. And I pray that you guys would have self confidence, but also God confidence. That if you believe that you can't do it, like there's a difference between self confidence and God confidence. When you say you can't, God says we can. So let Jesus be your confidence. Have God confidence. And as children of God, we can be secure. When we have revelation of the unconditional love of God that he has for us and God's acceptance for you, that will banish insecurity and comparison. When you get that revelation, and you get the revelation that of your worth and your value, you can feel secure. I lost my place. <laughs> No, I just, I literally just lost my place. All right. See, notes are good, but notes are bad. <laughs> because you feel like you have to follow them. 
So yeah, insecurity, comparison, God wants to banish those from your mind. He wants to make you feel secure. And when we understand his unconditional love for us and our value and our worth in him, we can feel secure. And we have no need for comparison because what God has for you, he has for your sister, he has enough for everybody. So going over again, some roadblocks to your destiny, identity, fear, insecurity, and comparison. And then I believe staying in your comfort zone is also a roadblock. I feel like a moment of discomfort, when we decide to be inconvenienced or uncomfortable, that one moment can lead to a lifetime of fruit and lead to a harvest. The moment you step out, for that moment where you feel, like say God calls you to pray for someone or he highlights someone to you and he says, I want you to, to, to step out and I want you to pray for them or I want you to give an encouraging word. It could be uncomfortable because it's challenging because you're like, okay, am I really hearing God? Is this you? Is this me? <laughs> but I feel like when we take that step out of our comfort zone, that momentary moment of discomfort can sometimes lead to someone's salvation or it can lead to a healing or it can lead to somebody having hope again or, or dreaming again or feeling the love of God. And that makes it worth it. And last time I was here, I, um, I don't know if some of you remember, but I briefly spoke on that this year is going to be your yes year. It's going to be the year where you say yes to everything that God has placed on your life, saying yes to all the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life, saying yes to believing in, in the dreams and desires that God has placed on your heart, and that saying yes oftentimes requires you stepping out and stepping out of your comfort zone and being uncomfortable and being inconvenienced. But I guarantee you it leads to so much fruit and it leads to so much harvest. It's so worth it. Oh, by stepping out of our comfort zones, we're able to achieve things that we never thought we could. You'll be amazed at what God can accomplish through you when you choose to step out. And when we say yes to God, we're coming into agreement with the plans and the purposes that he has for our life. I feel like God has extended to us these promises, but we can just look at those promises from afar and say, well, God, I don't feel ready yet, or the circumstances in my life aren't perfect yet, or I feel like I need to grow in this area, or I'm not adequate enough, or I need to learn more, or all this stuff. But God is saying, here, I have these promises for you. Will you receive them? Will you say yes to them? And once we say yes, we come into agreement with those things, and then our destiny is released. Our callings are released. The promises are released. So I encourage you, say yes. Step out of the boat of comfort, and you'll be amazed at what God can do for your life. Thank you, Jesus. Do you guys, did you guys receive something? <laughs> Was that good? you all you're so encouraging I feel like I'm preaching to myself too which is good it's good <laughs> do you do you feel like you you gain some like freedom in certain areas you're good amen thank you that's awesome praise Jesus that's good so we are all daughters of God we're children of the father and he has good plans for your life. He wants to bless you with the best. There's no need to compromise in any area of your life. I have seen this in my own life that sometimes I have settled for less because I believed I was less. But when I came into the revelation of my loyalty in Christ, my standards went up. <laughs> And I'm like, Papa, you have the best for me. And I'm going to choose to trust you and not make my own plans. Even though it's scary to relinquish my life to you, I'm going to do it because you're a good dad. 
And he is. He's a good father over your life that gives good gifts to you, that loves you unconditionally, not based on what you do, but because of who you are. And he's going he's gonna to banish fear from your life. He's going to banish insecurity and comparison and jealousy. And he's going to create this coalition, this cavalry charge of women who know who they are, who believe that they're daughters of God, who will support and encourage and celebrate in each other and believe in each other. And I felt like God is also transitioning us. Like, we all believe that we're princesses, right? We're princesses in the kingdom of God. Daddy, you know, pours out his blessings and his love, his love on us. But I feel like I got this word before I came here that God wants to transition us from being princesses to queens. Because when you become a queen, that's a position of leadership. Right? You're not just a princess who's like a, you know, princesses are like queens in training. You become a queen. You, you step into your authority and your position of leadership. And you rule. You know who your king is. You know who you belong to. There's a confidence that comes with stepping into the role of a queen. There's a responsibility. But then there's also a confidence in understanding your authority. So I pray that we would all transition from this place of just being princesses to being queens. And stepping into that place of leadership in our spheres, whatever sphere of life or society you operate in, that you would be a queen in that, in that place exercise your authority, that you would understand that God has given you a harvest. I feel like all of us have harvest fields. And those, are, those are souls. Those are people. In whatever area of life you operate in, wherever you work or, or wherever you do life, there's a harvest that God has given you for you to, to reap, souls to reap, people to encourage, people to love, and to bring into the knowledge of, of God. You guys like that queen word. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> ah, I made it on Facebook. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Can I have the worship team come up? I just want to briefly, we're going to go into some time of, of prayer and ministry because I want, for those of you who are struggling in the area of feeling free or anything in my message resonated with you that you feel is a roadblock in your life, I want you to be free from that. I want you to just feel a clearing and I believe that chains are going to be broken off of your life and that many of you are just going to be set free from hindrances and things that have come against your destiny. And you're going to feel a new boldness on you. And you're going to transition into that place of being a queen. So before, I've never done this before, <laughs> but we have some product. <laughs> I encourage you to visit the product tables. There's amazing product from Stacy Campbell, Julie Meyer, I think that's it. Oh, well, me and my husband. But, <laughs> but I encourage you to just, just fill yourself with, with worship, with the knowledge of God, and it will empower your life. And if, if some of you are, are wanting to learn more about your identity, how God sees you, we have two sets that are in relation to that theme. This one's called Your New Identity Redefined by God. Come on. And then the other one's called Divine DNA, New Creation Reality. So these are really focused on identity, understanding who you are in Christ, the authority that you have, the power that you have through the Holy Spirit.
and understanding that your, your children of God, co-heirs with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. So if you want to learn more, we have those sets available at our table and other sets as well. So I encourage you to check that out. Let's stand. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. I feel so encouraged by you all. You are a blessing to me. You really are a blessing to me. I love you too. You're all queens. Stepping into your place of rulership and authority in the kingdom. Come on. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for what you've poured out, God. Thank you for the revelation that we are daughters of God. Thank you for the revelation that you are our heavenly, loving Father who pours out good, good things on us, who wants the best for us, who loves us with an unconditional love. God, you prefer us. You are pleased with us. You're proud of us. When you look at us, you call us valuable and worthy and pure. And you call us to be queens. And I pray right now for that transition to take place in our hearts, where we would transition from just being princesses to coming into a position of being a queen. Where we will come into our rightful place, our place of leadership in the kingdom of God, our place of authority, understanding who we are in you. Thank you, Jesus. We just, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill this place right now. I pray for, for chains to be broken off of people, chains of insecurity, chains of lack, chains of fear, chains of comparison, chains of jealousy, to just be broken off right now in the name of Jesus. These things are not from God. These things are not from God. These are roadblocks to our destiny. These are roadblocks to us fully understanding who we are in you. And I just declare right now that those things would be broken off of our lives, God. That they would be broken off of our lives right now in the name of Jesus. And that freedom would have invade into our hearts. Freedom would invade into our lives. Pour out your freedom right now, Jesus. Pour out your freedom right now, Jesus. Pour it out, God. Pour it out. Pour out your joy, Lord. Your joy that's like a healing balm in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I believe that many of you are going to be delivered tonight of negative thinking and of negative thought patterns. That many of you that have been bound by your past are going to be set free from that. That God is going to encounter you and show you how he sees you. I feel like God is literally going to erase the past from your life. The negative past. And that what's going to occupy your thoughts is going to be his good thoughts towards you. It's going to be how he sees you. Thank you, Jesus. You're beautiful, Jesus. You're beautiful, and we honor you, and we love you, and we come before you as a company of women who love you, who adore your presence, who want to serve you with our lives. We want to love people the way you love us. We want to see people come into the kingdom of heaven. We want to see people come into a true understanding of their royalty in you. We want to be ones that pursue the lost children of God. We want to pursue the lost children of God. And I pray right now that you would fill us with a boldness and a passion to go into the darkest places of the world to rescue the lost children of God. That fear would not hinder us, that fear would be banished from us, God. And that you would fill us with a God confidence. That as we step out, you would clothe us with your anointing that you would clothe us with your power. It's all you anyways, Jesus. We're just vessels filled with your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship together right now.
want those who want prayer in the area of identity, feeling like you need a breakthrough in your identity, or feeling like you have been constricted or there's a roadblock in the calling that God has given you, I want you to receive prayer because I believe that God wants to set you free tonight. God wants you to feel clear and free to pursue all that he's created you to be. And I believe that freedom has already been released and is going to be released through prayer. So prayer team, who's the prayer team? If we, if we can just have the prayer team line up just across here. And I really encourage you to step out and receive prayer because prayer is powerful. And God truly wants to release you to be queens, to be all he has created you to be. He wants to heal you. He wants to restore you. He wants to fill you up so you, he can pour you out.
with God.